Hello friends, welcome to AI Flux. So fall is here, pumpkin spice lattes are here, and now ChatGPT can both see, hear, and talk to you about anything pumpkin spice that your phone can see. So OpenAI just announced that ChatGPT is now fully multimodal. It's not available to everyone, but if you have ChatGPT Pro, you might see this feature available today. So let's get into what this means and how it might affect Dolly going forward. So unfortunately, this release is not the uh, public rollout of Dolly 3. We're still gonna have to wait a few more weeks for that. However, this announcement is still massive. Um, basically, it's building on features we knew were present in ChatGPT a few months ago. Previously, the ability to upload images and for ChatGPT to basically classify an image with natural language was introduced as a feature of the ChatGPT 4 API. And weirdly, it was removed pretty quickly thereafter. ChatGPT basically now is fully multimodal. So it's doing a lot of things that Meta has tried to do more in a experimental context, but ChatGPT has now rolled this out in a way that everyone can use in a very actionable way. I would argue that a lot of the Meta attempts at doing multimodal AI are impressive, but they're not really polished enough to really be a product yet. And the biggest impact of this, I think, is um, regardless of if you've been building startups on top of uh, GPT-4's API, uh, or if you've just been trying to do multimodal AI as your differentiating factor as an AI startup, um, this has just ruined the foreseeable future for your company if you're doing that. And I think it shows how trying to build against GPT-4 or even with it is quickly becoming a non-viable business strategy for startups. And obviously AI has been very hot um, for startups. Every pitch deck we see now seems to have something AI in it. And we're starting to see why that might be not like the home run we thought it once was. So let's see what OpenAI has to say about this. So the way they put this is, we are beginning to roll out new voice and image capabilities in ChatGPT. They offer a new, more intuitive type of interface by allowing you to have a voice conversation or show ChatGPT what you're talking about. I would argue that currently ChatGPT is at least partially multimodal because you can run Whisper on device on iOS and that's at least one of those modalities. The way they kind of put this is, voice and image give you more ways to use ChatGPT in your life. Snap a picture of a landmark while traveling and have a conversation about what's interesting about it. Uh, in your home, snap pictures of a fridge or pantry and figure out what's for dinner. Um, now, what I will say is these are a little bit gimmicky for me. I, I think it's trying a little too hard. I, I think the analysis features of this are much more interesting. So like looking at fungus on a tree or understanding which tree should be trimmed, those kinds of things I think would be more interesting. Um, and also, you know, we're, we're starting to run into stark competition with Siri, right? Because the, uh, the thing they've added here is more text-to-speech that sounds realistic. And text-to-speech is great, but I mean, I, I still think if you saw anyone using Siri in public, you would think that person just looks like kind of a, you know, a goofy person for using Siri in public and actually like talking to a machine. And even though AI is more interesting now, I don't really think that's changed too much. So they have some, they have some voice samples here. They're pretty good. I mean, it's not uh, perfect yet, but it, it feels realistic. I wouldn't say it's really that much better than Siri, but there have been a lot of uh, text-to-speech AI projects soon. They also have some, some things here where you can chat about images. So if, for instance, this one is someone, I think doing something with a bike. And let's see, these are still trivial things that you'd probably still go on YouTube and search. And I would argue that the image here probably isn't doing a ton to help the AI do something. I mean, it might highlight something, but. I guess it's interesting to see. And yeah, so it's gonna tell this person to use an Allen key. And this technology is cool, but I don't think people are that stupid is the thing. Uh, you know, most people know how to do this and I still think just Googling information that's text is probably the best way to go forward. They, they seem to be pushing the voice capabilities and they're doing it gradually. So the likelihood that you are gonna see this feature when you log in to ChatGPT is actually quite low, unfortunately. But this is, unlike Dolly 3, technically being released publicly for testing now. Image input, I think, is the most interesting one here. So the, the way they describe this is, vision-based models also present new challenges, ranging from hallucinations about people to relying on the model's interpretation of images in high-stakes domains. Now, obviously, lowering your bike seat with an Allen key is not a high-stakes domain, uh, but they say prior to broader deployment, we tested the model with red teamers for risk in domains such as extremism and scientific proficiency. Um, now, now, this is sort of a contested one, I would say, but uh, in the diverse set of alpha testers, our research enabled us to align a few key details for responsible usage. So I guess you won't be able to ask this, you know, how, how do I disable, um, you know, a uh, anti-tank mine or something? You know, they, they may or may not be using this over in Eastern Europe. Um, and then they say making vision. So interesting. So they 
Distinguish image input and vision. And they work with this Be My Eyes, a free mobile app for blind. Okay, so you're making a disability kind of healthcare play. That's kind of interesting. And uh, clearly there are some limitations. And uh, again, as always with OpenAI, most of their announcements are actually about safety. But I want to click through with this system card. Okay, interesting. Okay, so this is a study they've done to understand the safety of their multimodal LLMs. Interesting. And what's also interesting is they refer to this model differently than just GPT-4. They refer to it as GPT-4V, which I, I assume stands for vision, not, uh, not five. So this is a curious announcement. Um, I don't think I actually have the capability here. No, I have advanced data analysis and plugins, but I do not have the multimodal bit. So, what do you guys think? Um, are, we, are you still going to be uh, paying for a ChatGPT Pro? Uh, are you kind of frustrated with the uh, weird way that they were allowed features? Um, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, again, if you like our videos or our content, please like and subscribe and share where you're willing to. And um, if you want to rent a really fast GPU to run LLMs, um, check out our promo link for Vast AI. And we'll see you in the next video.